big deal, right? A lot of people, unfortunately, make the wrong comparisons. Mm -hmm. In this talk, man, I'm excited about having this conversation with ladies because a lot of women struggle with comparisons. Mm -hmm. They begin to make comparisons to their finances, to their image, and to their marriage, and they begin so caught up or so consumed with all these different images, all these different definitions of who we should compare ourselves to, what we should compare ourselves to, and it's unfortunate that a lot of women are missing out on the mirror that God wants to show them. Mm -hmm so they can okay. see themselves. So we're gonna get this conversation going. I'm excited about it. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about, you know, marriage and age. Like, what do you feel, Alicia, about comparisons when it comes to that? You know, I'm 34. Ooh. I know, I know I'm 34. <clears throat> you, look you look good, girl. Mm. But it is what it is, I'm 34, you know? And a lot of my friends were married a long time ago or had kids a long time ago. Mm. And here I am, still single, still no kids waiting on God and it's like you know my clock is ticking faster and faster every mm. day mm -hmm. um, and it's hard because you know you want to compare yourself to other people's life and what they have going on but um, you know you just have to remember that being a daughter of God he has a purpose mm -hmm. and that's that's really what keeps me going is just knowing that you know because I have a purpose and because I know that God has a plan for my marriage and for my children then you know my plan is gonna take a little bit longer you know, then maybe somebody else's. And what I love about that, right now, <clears throat> even in your singleness, you're saying my marriage. Yes. My children. Like right. confession of the word is important. Right. Instead of saying, will I ever? It's saying, no, I will. Right. So that's powerful. A lot of ladies need to understand that, you know, speak those things that be nice though there. I know we ain't talking about no walk around some seven times and confessing things. You going to that man's job, walking around his job <laughs> seven Don't times, asking for the walls <laughs> of his blindness to fall down. But what we're saying is, <clears throat> it's saying that, you know what? If I have the desire to be married, why not say my marriage, mm -hmm. my children? Mm -hmm. Your prayers don't have to start now. Mm -hmm. Your prayers don't have to start when you get married. Oh, when yeah. you have kids, you got to say, <clears throat> I'm praying for my husband, right. mm -hmm. my right. children. And that's right. powerful. I don't know if you have anything else, but. Right. And I was just thinking, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, God gives us, the, he's going to give us the desires of yeah. our heart. Mm -hmm. Right. As long as we right. seek <clears throat> him and we do that diligently. And so as long as that desire continues to still be mm -hmm. in you to be mm -hmm. married, to be mm -hmm. a mother, and God hasn't taken that away, right. then that means that he's still going to give it to that's you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. That's why I love the scripture says, they that delight themselves in the Lord, he'll give them the desires of their heart. That's right. Many people jack that scripture up by saying, Saying, well, if I do my ritual duties, mm -hmm. he owes me mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. carnal desires. Mm -hmm. No, whatever you delight in <clears throat> will determine your desires. Right. And so the That's more true. you delight in God, you're almost like it being, brings an ease to those desires yeah. mm -hmm. versus it being so impulsive and you're like, oh my gosh, I, oh, oh, my, I wanna get married, I wanna have kids. Like, you know what, God, since I'm so caught up in you, I trust your timing, I trust your plan. Look at Sarah. Y'all looking at me like, hold up, I ain't trying to be 90. Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking about like, because I know that there are people who are married that on the outside, it may look like That's they're right. happy. That's right. And, you know, social media tells us that this yeah. is just the best marriage they've ever had. But yeah. you don't know what's going on in the bedroom. That's true. You can look right. in a house window and see the pretty furniture and, and the large screen TV, but you don't see what's in the refrigerator or what's in the bedroom. That's true. Right. Unless you actually go in. So. And people don't understand good things take time. They take time. Right. That's right. They take work. I mean, they that, take work. That yep. marriage. Yeah. I mean, it's not one thing where you kind of like oh i'm married now that's it but right. mm. as you're in the marriage yeah. that it's going to continue to be more work absolutely that, hey i might not necessarily be ready for it <laughs> <laughs> hey, god really is still working right. on god me girl still working on him, and he knows <laughs> that and when ashley gets married she's got to be able yeah. to do this she has to be not selfish and yep. i might just be in that place where i'm not there yet mm -hmm. so god also knows a lot of people a lot of women we a girlfriend of mine she was telling me a lot of times she would go to a woman and she will immediately look at like that yeah. left hand yeah. mm -hmm. just to see if she's married yeah. and then all of a sudden well how big is her ring right or oh she yeah. must be so blessed or she's so lucky that she got married and I'm like oh it's me yeah. I'm not there yet she's better than me mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily the case because she may tell you all different kinds of things about yeah. the things that her husband is doing mm -hmm. or the things that she's got to do with with her kids mm -hmm. and so a lot of times we 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 see that thing that we want but then when we get there is that really what yeah. we ready for right yeah. and it's crazy what most people want is the surface yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah. they see the surface so i tell yep. people man because i tell people all the time like i hear the behind the scenes stories mm -hmm. but i also see the postings online mm -hmm. and people i'm like don't be confused by the right. postings mm -hmm. because i know the dude is calling me talking about he's struggling in this mm -hmm. she's struggling so it's like sometimes we get so caught up on 
the young love mm -hmm. versus observing the old love, mm -hmm. right. the proven mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. the seasoned love, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the people who was in and out of love right. but stayed right. with right. love. Right. Because right. love is factual. Because yeah. if we go by feelings, we'll be in and out of love and be like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Most marriages ended because of feeling, not logic. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people escaped it because they wasn't prepped for it. But then when they stepped out, it was like, man, I, I could have I fought for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I tell people before you say my marriage, my children, you got to ask, how's my life? Mm -hmm. Right. When mm -hmm. you ask yourself, how's my life? You'd be like, well, I'm not ready for my marriage mm -hmm. and my children because my marriage and my children needs me to have a whole life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's good. I, oh, go ahead. Well, I want <clears> to <throat> say um, one of the dangerous things I think um, comes with comparison is it's almost like you're, you're calling God a liar or you're saying his mm, plan good. for mm -hmm. your life that's isn't good enough. You know, it's yeah. like saying Jeremiah 33, Sorry, 33.3. Three. It's like saying Jeremiah 33.3 three, um, isn't good enough for me. You know, mm -hmm. he has a, a plan and a hope for my life, for my future. So if I'm looking at somebody else's plan and their, somebody else's hope and somebody else's future, I'm saying, well, God, the plan that you took time to make for me isn't good enough. Right. And right. that's just, that's believing a lie. It's believing what the enemy um, is trying to sell you on, that God doesn't love you. Again, it always comes back to how much God loves you. And the yeah. crazy thing about it is, mm -hmm. all of us are equal in his eyes, mm -hmm. but the path to us wasn't equal. Mm -hmm. The path mm -hmm. through Jesus was equal, but mm -hmm. the storyline, the plot, the underlying theme was different. Mm -hmm. So if I compare my life to somebody else, how do I not know what kind of goodness is drawing that person to repentance and what, that, what kind of plot and story God has for his life? Because even for men, comparisons is big. Mm -hmm. Because we're like, okay, my status, my money, my whatever, how does it compare to the next man? It's like, you don't know that man's story. You don't know what sacrifices, compromises. Before you, make, before you compare somebody, ask them what they compromised on. Because mm, right. when you try to compare, you don't even ask what they compromised on. You don't know what sin they had to be in mm -hmm. to get where they at. Because the devil will give you stuff, too. He'll give you stuff when you're He'll immature because he knows. Rich. Exactly. You'll look rich, <laughs> but you're not rich on the inside. Nope. That's, that's, that's true. That's so true. you don't know how many people compromise for their success mm -hmm. and i rather listen god's way is the slow way unfortunately mm -hmm. god is like molasses he flows slow god is like driving with your grandma he drives slow what does it say a day is like a thousand years i know it's god's nothing looking, to him nothing, nothing to him it's nothing so when it comes to image Brittany, what do you have well um just working in the field that i work in um in the industry working as a professional model i mean um, I mean, we're constantly scrutinized for, you know, how we look, <coughs> what our size is, our skin, our teeth, um, you're too skinny, you're too fat, your boobs aren't big enough, they're not, you know, small enough. It's, it's a never ending pounding. And I think, I um, well, I, well, I think, um, and so even with the images that are projected in the magazines, you know, and you have a girl that's in the grocery store and she sees, you know, a girl on the cover and they, she sees how she looks, but they don't know, you know, the team that it took to put right. that girl together. That's true. You know, they don't know um, even the struggles that this female mm -hmm. has. You know, I work with, with women every day who struggle with, um, you know, eating disorders mm -hmm. and they have um, emotional issues that stem from childhood. They um are suicidal and and people they go around they compare themselves to an image that's not even real right. um and unfortunately society they just they put it in your face and then you know women perceive themselves as i'm not good enough because right. i don't look like that right. when the girl in the magazine doesn't even look like that mm. and so um you know it really is again it's a lie of the enemy and it's a way to strip um, a woman of her true identity because if we really realize that God took his time to create us you know we're fearfully we're wonderfully made that's just not those are just not words mm -hmm. that's a description of how he saw us when he made us mm -hmm. and um, that's something that we as women and you know men we have to make sure that we put in the faces of women to fight the lies that the enemy tries to sell them right. the beautiful thing about what was said was what, what popped up in me was pressure versus precious mm -hmm. right when you look at, if you don't know how precious you are in the eyes of God, you will uh, succumb yourself to pressures. Mm -hmm. Peer right. pressure, social pressure, 
economic pressure. But the pressure be hard. Like the, it be it's, <clears throat> it's in, girl, in it's, girls' faces. It's intentional. Like, yeah. And that's why you almost gotta you gotta make sure your time with God behind the scenes yeah. will be enough to keep you steadfast mm-hmm. when you're in scene. Right. Meaning because listen, if I don't know who I am in Christ and I see Bentley's, Mercedes, Escalades, and I'm driving my, you know, my car, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm nothing because I don't have those. Mm-hmm. Your, our level of time with God will determine how strong we stand in those pressures. Because mm-hmm. the pressure's going to be there. Yeah, right. Whether you're a veteran in this thing or a babe in this thing, pressure's going to be there. That's why it says you got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Mm-hmm. you got to be in a place where you say, you know what, God? I am precious. Mm-hmm. Right. That no matter what pressure I step in, I know for a fact who I am to you. Right. Because if I don't know who I am to him, then I'll let the pressures now yeah dictate me now and that's why we got to get to a place where we say you know what god i am precious in your eyes now if there's some things about us that we need to change yes we'll go in the gym we'll make those changes but we should make those changes so we could be more prepped for the purpose versus more prepped for everybody else's opinions mm-hmm. and i think when we do that we'll be like you know what the pressure is refining me not man i was trying to make a word that rhymes <laughs> not destroying me we'll do it better next time right, and <laughs> also but also <clears throat> just like the devil is the prince of the airwaves. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that, that's true. So when we're constantly looking at media, mm-hmm. if it's TV, magazines, mm-hmm. movies, all this other stuff, I mean, we have to know that that's not necessarily the enemy, but those thoughts become the enemy trying to seep into our minds mm-hmm. saying that, that we're not good enough, mm-hmm. and that's what perfection looks like. That's what beauty mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. When, um, like you said, God has already He made us, and he made us perfectly. Yeah. So. I think if we can just understand how much God really loves us, mm-hmm. right. then we'll be able to see ourselves the way that God does. Because when, a lot of girls, when we look in the mirror, we don't see what everybody else sees. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There are so many girls that will I'd be like, you're so pretty, I love your hair. And, well, I don't really, I don't like it. Yeah. Right. You know, but, but you're like, how do you not see that? And yeah. it's because of how they feel about themselves on the inside because they don't feel the love that God has for them. Right. And that's really we're his daughters and he loves us so much and just because we may not be beautiful <coughs> to this person somebody's gonna think i'm beautiful mm-hmm. yeah. you know mm-hmm. so. and that's why I mean, yourself mm-hmm. you're, you're right to yourself right. you have to say i am beautiful exactly. i am perfectly made exactly and that's why we gotta let we have such hard shells around us yeah. over so many years of opinions and pressures we gotta let god through mm-hmm. and let god let us know i chose you despite right that yes, your sin made you ugly, Mm. but I made you beautiful. Mm. So when he begins to wash those blemishes, and Mm. that's why I I say women, let let God dress you in the morning. Let God God fix your hair. I don't think God does hair, but what I'm saying is let God do those. He might, he might, but he don't do it like, but anyway, you know, he don't don't slay it right. But what I'm saying, (laughs) but what God can do is, is letting you know that all these Photoshop images cannot compare to what I've created you for. Mm-hmm. Right. Because whatever you identify with determines your identity. Okay. If you identify with that's the way a woman should look, that's the way a man should look, then that will begin to shape your identity. But last but not least, when it comes to status, Ashley, what you have? Well, me, I'm, uh, I love the news, and I love social media and all that okay. kind of stuff, and I have to watch <clears throat> myself. Sometimes I have to take myself away from social media because mm-hmm. I'll get the thumbing through and swelling that thumb through. Beat, beat. I'll be, I'm tending them. I know. <laughs> you got to stretch I'll be, it. And I'll be watching the girls that get to go on vacations all the time. Mm. Their hair just going in the wind because they on their little private boat and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. their uptown apartments. It's just like, man, I wish I had that. Mm-hmm. That that much. They look like they're living the life. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm, I feel like I am blessed. I have a lot of opportunities and a lot of good stuff in my life. But it's just like all of that goes out of the window as soon as I get on social media and start looking at those things. But you got to know that, what, like you said in Jeremiah, what is for you is for mm-hmm. you. The plan that God has for you is specifically tailor made for you. That's and when good. you start looking at other people outside of what your plan is, you're now telling God that that plan is not good enough. Mm-hmm. That's why the Bible says making comparisons are not, is not wise. Yeah. Right. Because we don't know what debt they're in. We don't know what compromise they had to make. And it's crazy that we get so caught up that this, we act like it's as if this life is our life. Right. We're pilgrims passing through. Right. Houses, cars, sleep, money, resources are all resources for our purpose. Right. So when we think about when you travel, if you're on a business trip and, and your boss sends you to Milwaukee mm-hmm. and you go to Milwaukee 
it is pointless for you to try to buy a house in Milwaukee, to buy a car in Milwaukee, to find a boo in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. because you're only there for two weeks. Right. And so many, that two weeks is equivalent to the vapor that, that our life is. Right. And God's like, why are you going into this life trying to make this life your everything when you do have the boat up here? Right. You do have the house up here. Right. I'm not saying they got boats, but I'm saying we, we you not, have things 10 boats. times have better up here. Right. He's saying, I'm trying to give you your tangible things is in heaven. I'm trying to give you intangible things on earth because the intangible things I'm trying to bring through you to bring heaven to earth versus bringing earth to heaven. None of us can bring anything from earth to heaven. So why are we trying to live life as if, well, I got this house in Malibu, this house here, so I can walk with proud. And he said, a proud look I despise. So we got to get to a place where we say, you know what? I'm just a pilgrim passing through. Everything is a resource. For my purpose if i get the house if i get the boat wow that's good that's good but if i don't i know when i cross that gate right. i the the smallest house in heaven is better than the biggest mansion on earth because i have peace i don't have to worry no more i don't have to have to worry about pain anymore i'd rather be a street sweeper in heaven than a ceo of a bank on this earth right. because i know for a fact that while i'm on this life i'm just passing through and right. i think it's also important <clears throat> what you said about how you even though you see that they have all these nice things, you don't really know what they had to give up or, yeah. or what they did to get the those things. And yeah. The compromise, exactly. And the enemy will give, can give nice things. Like right. God's not the only person that gives nice yeah. things to people. He will yeah. give you nice things if you're walking in his path and, yeah. and doing what this, the world wants you to do. I mean, right. so. And sometimes, not even necessarily <coughs> looking at somebody saying, well, we don't know what they went through. Because somebody might say, well, I don't know what she went through. Mm-hmm. And it might not necessarily be nothing demonic. I mean, I know for sure God blessed me with my house. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you better talk like, that talk. Praise God. My praise house. God. And so, mm. not even necessarily looking at somebody saying, okay, well, you don't know what they went through or um, stuff that they're dealing with that is not of God, but just that is for them. That's yeah. Yeah, God right. bless them yeah. with that. <clears throat> you know, and that's not to say that God's not going to bless me with something that's going to be great as well. You have to remember that those things are things. Yeah. Those are the things of the world. That's and right. those are the stuff that we are not supposed to be yeah. setting our hearts on. That's so right. you well, got to remember that. I wanted to ask you guys, um, ladies and over. Josh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's for the ladies, I'm sorry. Um, so I may decrease with <laughs> <laughs> with everything we've learned about comparisons and how dangerous it is and what it does, what are some practical things you think that right. we could do to help us to, because some, some people are in the habit of comparison, comparing themselves mm-hmm. to others, and that, if you're used to doing that for so long, it could be extremely hard to get out of. Mm-hmm. So right. what are some practical things that we can share that can help people break free of that? So one thing that I have done and I continue on a daily basis to do is I purposely pray for God to make my heart desires his will so that I'm not desiring the things that are not what he has for me and that really works because once once you pray about it and you know you have to keep praying it's not just one single prayer but Mm -hmm. pray God I want what you want for me I don't want anything that is not what you have for me Mm -hmm. make my heart desire what you want for me that and and for me because I'm a prayer but sometimes I might forget so mm-hmm. sometimes I have to make sure I take myself out of that environment. So sometimes I do have to do like a cleanse from social media mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I don't necessarily want to unfollow my girlfriend, even though she's doing good. She's doing you know? good. But sometimes I, if certain certain situations are going on, a big event's happening, and I know I'm not going. Right. Sometimes I have to like take myself, I have to take that app off my phone. Mm-hmm. So and sometimes you have to do that cleanse. You have to do that fast from getting away from those things that you know causes that anxiety or causes that's that um, that comparison. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think for me, um, I think when we keep our hearts um, in a state of um, being thankful for what we do have, mm, um, yes. because <coughs> it's, so, it's so easy to forget when we're looking at somebody else what God has done in mm, our lives. Yes. And if we really think about it, yeah. I know when I think about it, I mean, mm-hmm. I can just start crying now right. because because of what he's done in my life and the, right. the ways that he's made. And I'm just like, how did that happen? And I mm-hmm. know it was God. And so when you keep a heart that's thankful, you not only are getting rid of that comparison, you know, mm-hmm. deception, but you're actually opening yourself up to receive even more blessing mm-hmm. from God because he, he loves thankful hearts. Right. You know, he wants to bless 
Mm-hmm. Even more hearts that are thankful. And to piggyback yeah. off of that real quick, a friend of mine keeps a small little thankful notebook in her purse. Mm-hmm. And every time something happens, she just writes, she just jots it down. Mm-hmm. So that when there's times that she's down on herself and she's, mm-hmm. think, she's thinking the bad thoughts, she takes out that journal and says, oh, yeah, I remember God did this for me the other day. Right. And he'll do That's it good. again. And, <coughs> yeah. yeah. And as we close this talk up, I want to remind each and every one of us. You remember those, you know those cups when you were a kid? And it looks like it has water in it. Mm-hmm. So when you move it, it looks mm-hmm. like it's water, mm-hmm. but it's empty. Mm-hmm. Why do we make comparisons? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I'm about? But, the I little, know you but there's I some you. cups that you can buy no, where yeah, yeah. they have the, the, the illusion mm-hmm. that there's water in mm-hmm. there, but there's no water in mm-hmm. there. Okay. Never try to compare yourself with something that looks full, but it's really mm-hmm. empty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of the comparisons, we're looking at something that looks full, That's right. but they're really empty. That's right. mm-hmm. We got to look at people with dire situations who don't have a lot of money, let's observe them. Mm. When I went to Africa, you just got back from Uganda. I saw people who had 10 times less. But their hearts were full. But their hearts were full. They didn't look full, but they were full. So our challenge should be, is to be full even if we don't look full, then to look full and be empty. Not be full, that's good. Good Good talk, ladies. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right.